Hello everyone, I'm Bets Golden. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have something that's really fun I'm gonna share with you today. There is a gel press plate out that is called Impressibles. And we're gonna go over three different types of mediums that you can use on these today. Let me show you the end results and let's see if you can't figure out what I use to create it. And while you're doing that, taking a look at that, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit the follow as well. And then at the end of the video, you can like it if you liked it, and leave me any questions or comments. But just right now, go on down into that comment section and tell me what you think I used on each of these. I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was a lot of fun and I cannot wait to create. All right, let's jump down to the table. Hello everyone, I am Bets Golden. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm super excited to share with you today. We're gonna go over the Impressibles, not the Impressionables as I was mistakenly calling them, the Impressibles. And the one that we're gonna play with today is the Rose Mandala. This is by Gel Press and this is what it is. It is a gel press plate that has a mandala in it. So it's going to basically transfer this image. I'm going to be using two mediums today. Uh, excuse me, three mediums today. They're a rather wet type medium, so I am going to be working on some watercolor paper. Normally, I love copy paper for this, but at least for the first pulls, I'm going to be using some watercolor paper. If you notice, I also have this down on my glass mat, and that is because it sticks, and I know that it's not going to leave any marks that I can't get up. If I were to put this on my silicone mat or something like that, my craft mat that's silicone based, it could leave a mark. So so I don't want to put it on a silicone base or wood. I just like to use it on a glass mat. All right. The watercolor paper I'm using is just from this. It's Canson. It comes in a pack of 30. This is a kind of a little cheater thing that I do. I like to go to Hobby Lobby or Michael's and use their 40% their off coupon because this is a $10 pack, which isn't really bad considering how much watercolor paper can run you but I use that on on this I get 30 sheets for six bucks I don't think you can get a better deal out there so just something to keep in mind I've already pulled three sheets from it and like I said we're going to use three different mediums the first medium that we're going to use today is going to be my gelatos um, and this is basically a pigmented stick so I'm just going to apply this right on here and I'm kind of working backwards so you're gonna see more of the unusual mediums that you may not think would work on a gel press or something that you wouldn't think to use on a gel press so I'm gonna go backwards so I'm gonna do the most basic one at the end and I'm going to start off with the unusual one which is the gelato and I love to do these on the gel press on the impressibles because you can literally color right on it and usually you can see where you have colored and where you have not so I'm gonna finish coloring this up and so I'm going to do I did the center with the bright bubble gum I'm doing around the middle with the orange soda and then I'm going to do the edges of the outer of it with the limoncello and it's cool if I have to walk away I can pick this right up again and just get it wet and it will do the same thing so don't worry if it dries it's totally fine. Let me finish coloring this up and then I will show you. What I to ended do. up changing my mind on the color, and the reason is because when I went to pull that color, and this isn't the gel press issue, this is a creator air issue. Since I was pulling such light uh, colors onto a white piece of paper, it gave me a really light transfer, and I wanted something that was a little bit more bold. So I went ahead and used the black cherry, the metallic grape, 
and the silver ice. And I gotta tell you, there is something about the metallicies that move really nicely on the gel press plate. I noticed um, just a really nice coverage. So you just go over it like so. And if it dries, it's okay. You're gonna activate it with some water and you should be okay. So anyway, once you get that all laid out, you take some water and you just spray it all over your gel press. And this is why it's super important to have a watercolor paper, something that's heavy duty, because it's very wet. Then you're just going to press. Impressibles require you to press. Get that all nice and smoothed out. You can take your brayer over it if you got it laying around. I usually do brayer over the back of my gel presses just because I like to clean the brayer off too. And then voila, there you go. So that's how you can do this with gelatos. Again, the center is super light because I used a silver instead of another purple or a blue, but it's really beautiful, really fun. Now, the next thing that you can do is I'm gonna go ahead and take another ghost print. I'm gonna do it on the back of this and um, just the back of the one I used because I'm not probably gonna use that. And as you can tell, it, it's not perfect. It does get a little bit lighter, so on and so forth. So from here, I'm just going to take and rub off the most of this that I can, making sure I dry it. My next thing I'm gonna use is a different color combo. And so I have to really get it clean right now because purple will turn pretty much anything brown if it's not red or blue. So I'm just going to throw on some hand sanitizer, rub it around with my fingers, this is the best way to get your gel press clean is with some hand sanitizer I've discovered. It's my favorite way at least. And then I'm just going to take my rag and just get that all lifted. And the reason why I'm showing you this step in this video, even though this is about, you know, how to layer, use the impressibles and then also, um, you know, using them with three different mediums is because if you're using a water soluble medium like I'm do using, it will reactivate when it gets wet. So that is why you want to go ahead and try to remove as much of that color that isn't that is going to contradict or contrast too much with your next color because you'll end up with mud and I don't want mud so as you can tell I got the majority of it off so now I can go ahead and do my next thing which is going to be using these dilutions um, mists so this is a really fun technique and I'm actually going to work my way from the outside in. So I'm gonna start off with some sunshine and I'm going to just take it around the edges like so. Okay, and see I'm saturating again, so I definitely need to make sure that I use that watercolor paper, right? All right, and then from here, I'm going to use the fresh lime. I'm gonna move more towards the inside. Well, if it lets me squirt, it's okay. This is what I can do for this. I can just take and do some tapping. Probably not gonna get a lot of color on this way, but we'll make do. Yeah, we'll move on to this one. This will be a good, this will be a really nice lift anyway. This is London blue. So I'm gonna do the London blue in the center. Now see, I got that really wet. I'm gonna go over it again on the edge with that sunshine, just cause I didn't get any of that line down. Okay, now I'm ready to pull this. So I'm going to go ahead, start off definitely with my watercolor paper and just lightly press. Because this is super, super wet. 
and then voila look how cool that is and that is with your mist and even the areas that I got around the edges that's so cool I love what that looks like now from here, I am gonna try just to throw down some copy paper to pick up, do another lift. Hopefully it's not as wet, but it may pop through the back. Yeah, see? I don't even have to really touch it for this, right? And then this is my ghost lift or my second pull. For our third and final medium today, we're going to use acrylic paint. And this is a little bit of a different kind of acrylic paint. It's actually a watercolor acrylic paint, meaning that it has watercolor effects and it can move in things kind of like a watercolor, though definitely is an acrylic. It's a little bit thinner. But what we're gonna do for this one is I'm actually gonna use the copy paper on this because um, it's not, like that super, super wet medium that we had just used. And I'm just gonna dab on some of this in a couple places, and I really should have done that purple in the, meat, in the middle because of the other colors that I'm using here. Oh well. So I'm using, this one is the um, light purple, this is the pink, and I'm going to be using the pastel turquoise on this as well. And the reason why I'm ending with the paint is because paint is a wonderful way to actually lift whatever did not come off of your previous pulls. So that is why I'm doing this paint. And I did it directly on the gel press instead of rolling off and then rolling because I wanted to see if I could get a little bit of different variations in color on here, but you could definitely roll this off of the gel press and then put it on. But it looks like I'm pretty much gonna end up with just a purple. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw in some pink right there, and I'll put some turquoise around in some spots as well. And that's kind of a lot of paint just to oop, just to give it a little bit more oop, there's a lot right there <laughs> just to give it a little bit more contrast and variation all right so let me take my piece of copy paper this time and then just going to press it out like so and voila, how pretty is that? So fun. So definitely the traditional way of painting works. I'm gonna clean off my brayer a little right here with this. Do another pull on this as well. Usually you can get two or three pulls off of this, especially if your brayer's dirty and you keep cleaning it off. There's that one. I kinda like that second one better than the first one, which is, totally normal, right? And let's see if we have anything else left here. Can I do a third pull? I think I can, I think I can. There's still some paint left on that brayer. This time I'm gonna do it on one of my reject pages. <laughs> Maybe we'll make something interesting out of this. Sometimes it's fun to do it this way. And I'm gonna actually clean the rest of my brayer off of the back. I'm okay losing that print. No love loss there, all right? If this works, great. If it doesn't, then I have a piece of scratch paper that I can use my brayer on. But oh my God, that is so pretty. I love it. All right, so from here, you can actually store it dirty like this, put it right back into your clamshell, or you can clean it with some hand sanitizer and a baby wipe. Whatever you wanna do is fine. I am gonna leave mine dirty because this isn't so dirty that it will muddy up my next pulls, but there's just enough cool stuff right there that it will be very interesting to have it dry. Because it's an acrylic, it will not reactivate 
once I lay more color on. So I will still be able to pick up any paint bits and it won't create mud, if that makes any sense. I hope that you enjoyed this little tutorial on how to use three different types of mediums on your Impressible. Make sure that you subscribe Leave any questions or comments down below, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to share. Until next time, I'm Bets Golden.